Hello, everybody. I'm Brian. And I'm Brian. And this is Brian versus Brian, episode 180. Welcome, Red Dawn. Um, I love this. What's it say? In our time, no foreign army has ever occupied American soil until now. Red Dawn. Nice. 1984. Patrick Swayze, yo. Um, I think this is his second movie. Kind of shows. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily him, but the maybe the pick. You know, he's, yeah, yeah, totally. He wasn't offered a lot of movies at the time. Because uh, he's trying. <laughs> he's, mm-hmm. he's acting like this is going to be a war epic. <laughs> Classic. Um, yeah. Released August 10th, 1984. Uh, directed by John Milius. Milius? What did he do? He did a couple other... Oh, yeah, he did Conan. Conan, yeah. And he was a screenwriter of Apocalypse Now. Hmm. Hmm. So he's got a bit of a track record here. Um, budget $17 million, Box office $38 million. Oh, yeah, it also has Charlie Sheen. Mm-hmm. Young Charlie Sheen. It's got Leah Thompson. For the you Back know, to the future? Six, yeah, six or seven words she says. Yeah, you know she's got a deep. Oh yeah, and Powers Booth. Yeah, my boy Powers <laughs> Booth. Love that guy. Yeah, all I when I see him now, I just think frailty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the cop, the, the cop. FBI agent. Yeah, yeah. I always think of uh, he's the villain in the Van Damme movie Sudden Death, the, the Stanley Cup, basically a Die Hard movie, but he plays the main terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah, so this movie goes right into it, man. It's like what a fucking ten yeah, seconds in. It happens so, so fast within five minutes. The Russians are already parachuting. Yeah, Swayze's dropping off his little brother Sheen at school, and there's that good scene where they see the the football scoreboard and home team, the Wolverines, lost. And it's like, man, you think they take that down? That's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And then you know Charlie Sheen's like, he's, you know. You've lost a football game before. No, I didn't win. And I remember our buddies always saying, I don't got wind to believe your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. then they go into the school. We got the teacher talking, and then kind of something catches his eye out the back window. He creeps up to the window, and yeah, people are parachuting in. It's like fucking a minute into the movie. Yeah. And he goes out there, now, excuse me, how can I help you fellas? <laughs> like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> they got guns and parachutes. You don't walk out. This is a different time in school. They were a lot more trusting. Yeah. Yeah, and then he gets blasted. And then a, other kids get blasted through the window. Then you get that classic scene of the kid uh, hanging oh, out yeah, the yeah, window. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, I don't remember what happens at, right directly after that. They, Oh, yeah. Uh, Swayze. What the hell is his name in this? Um, Jeb? No, Jed. 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 Comes in with his badass sidestep truck, mm-hmm. short box or whatever they call those, and uh, peels through. Get in. Jump picks in. Up yeah. All, Jump in. Yeah, picks up his brother and all his friends, and they take off. Um, and I don't remember where they go immediately. They... I think they go to the gas they, station, right? Because it's one of the they immediately kids go to the gas station yeah. owned by the kid's dad, and he loads him up. I'm not going with you, but you know, yeah, load up. Thirty out six. It's like it's a gas station slash gun store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gives him all these guns and ammo. Forget about the stupid stuff like cakes and cookies. Get the dry goods. <laughs> Some meat sticks, Campbell soups. Loads them all up, and don't you come back here, no matter what you hear, no matter what you see. I'll come get you when the time is right. Yeah, it was so weird. It's like, bye, son. <laughs> it's like, why wouldn't you stay with your dad? Bye, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, this guy will take care of you. He's the ex-football. <laughs> he's the ex-quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Got a good head on his shoulders. He's going places. Sends him off. Into... They go up into the hills, the mountains. I can't remember what town this is placed in. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. remember. What state? I know it it was filmed in uh, Las Vegas, 
New Mexico, wherever that is. Not Nevada. I don't remember what state they're portraying. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the the Russians have teamed up with like Nicaraguans and like a Cubans Latino and, yeah. Mexican alliance, so they come in on both borders mm-hmm. or something like that. And uh, it's funny, man. Like all oh, the uniforms are just this white and black spotted. I don't know what's that supposed to camo into. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the uniforms are just all over the place. You'll see like one guy with a tiny little Cuban mustache, and then some Russians, and ah, I can never tell who's who. I mean, and then near the end, there's that the the dead body from Weekend at Bernie's is one of the bad guys. Did you see him? He looks uh-huh. just like that guy. I was like, dude, that's that's Bernie. You just see him walking, <laughs> coming in. Oh my god! Uh, I thought he looked just like him. But, uh, yeah, then they come... What, why do they come down from the mountains? They want to know... Oh, it's been a, oh, yeah, they're running out of food. Right? It was our last Campbell's soup. It's like, it seems like it's been like a day. Yeah. Two days. It's like, I do... Hey, what? <laughs> How much... You guys need to quit eating so much. <laughs> just snacking, dude. It's like, because you guys got loaded up. Remember the back of that truck? Just it's cases so, of yeah, sodas yeah. and... Like, dude, you drink that much Coca Cola in three days? <laughs> I was thirsty. <laughs> What's that? Caddyshack? What are you a diabetic? <laughs> uh yeah, so they come back. And I like how they're just walking through town. Town's like patrolled by like uh military and shit. They're just walking through Hey, Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Ooh, why is he looking at us like that? Is he scared? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be strolling through the middle of the streets, yeah. <laughs> acting like we belong here when we don't even know what's going on. Um, yeah. And then they, uh, t- 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 who do they? They talk to some talk- woman. I don't remember. It was like a convenience store. She tells them about the. It wasn't a concentration camp, but some sort of camp, and that kind of sets yeah. them off. Yeah. And they go there, and it's uh, Jed, and. Matt's dad. And uh, this guy is trying to play this like it's a art piece. The dad. <laughs> hey, boys. <laughs> He's got the blood on his face. Don't you cry for me. Not now. Not ever. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, it's like everyone is just super complacent. Like that dad at the grocery store is like, leave me. The dad at the concentration camp is like, it's over for us. You have each other now. It's like, you're behind a fence. A bar, you know, like a chain link fence. <laughs> it's not <laughs> It's not the, exactly the Mississippi. I'm on the east side. I'm on the west side. You know what I mean? We break it down. Bada, bada, bing, bada, boom. <laughs> you ever seen the great escape, motherfucker? Let's go. <laughs> so, I don't get it. <laughs> and he's like, just done. And he's telling him, you got to take care of each other now. Where's mom? <laughs> I didn't even say. <laughs> he's just, he just acts it through his eyes. Yeah. Where's my dad, Mr. Whatever? Mr. Eckhart? I don't know, son. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> and then I love that he's like, now you guys go. You got each other now. You go. And then they leave. And then he waits till they're like gone, completely like out of earshot. Boys, <laughs> <laughs> avenge me! <laughs> avenge me! <laughs> you don't need to be avenged. Uh, You're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> Avenging <laughs> is for the fallen. You're behind a fence. <laughs> I'm behind, I'm behind this fence. Fence, venge me! <laughs> Put them behind a fence. Oh, God. And it's like you wait to say the most poignant part, like the most guttural scream till they're gone. Yeah, <laughs> they're driving away. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear something? <laughs> <laughs> we should go yeah. back. Nope, like Dad a- said that was it. That was the last time yeah. we're going to talk to him. We're leaving. Sounds like we're someone's turning back. Fence me? I don't know. It's hard, hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Yeah, we're not going back there ever again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's fucking weird. 
they go back in the mountains, I guess. Uh, I don't really remember what happens or what makes them turn into this rebel group. But, uh... Oh, it was, um... Yeah, this movie's, uh... Story structure is... It's like the same thing, just repeated. It's like they go out and they shoot at some people, they come back, there's some dialogue. They go out, kill some more people, come back, there's some dialogue. It's just like that for the whole movie. Um, but I think that there's a there's that comedic scene where I think it's the Russians come up to that uh, national forest sign and the Russians trying to translate, and he's like completely wrong. Um, but they end up killing those soldiers, and I think in retaliation, the general executes mm, uh, a bunch yeah. of family members, and that that kind of sparks the hardcore revolution part of them. Because at that moment, they're kind of just trying to survive, but the moment they execute. All those yeah, and, it kind of... and they're, they're, for some reason they know about it and are there watching it. Yeah, yeah, right. It's weird. It's like right, what? they they got the perfect time and place, and uh, <clears throat> they're watching over the hill, and um, their dad's part of the group, and I'll start seeing what uh, oh beautiful yeah. for <laughs> spacious sky for amber <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> oh, now he must be avenged. Yeah. Before it was superfluous, but that's now when you scream, "Avenge me!" That's like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Moment. That's the moment on your knees in blood. <laughs> Avenge me! Uh, who's yelling that to? <laughs> and so they start doing their uh, um, rebel. What do they call them? They call them a militia or something. I don't know. But anyways, they start killing people, uh, and. Uh, there's a memorable one where the girl goes in. The other girl, not Leah Thompson. Thomas. I don't remember. Really. Oh, the uh, God with the flash dance. I haven't yeah, seen flash she's dance, dirty so dancing. Dirty dancing. It's that's like, what that's, I was it's the only other movie I've seen her in. Another Patrick Swayze movie. Um, so she goes up on a bike, and she knows they're gonna want her oh, sack yeah, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so, so she's got a little picnic basket. Oh no! Don't take my picnic basket. <laughs> and then the Russian guy. I love it, and she's leaving. Forget the woman. Forget the broad. Take her stuff. And then uh, she bikes away. Where you going, beautiful? Hey. And then I love it when he's like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they throw that in the tank, and then it blows up. And then, get that bitch. <laughs> he's got the <laughs> a little knife. <laughs> Chase him down. They pop out of foxholes and shoot him. And it's a lot of, like mash type stuff dun, 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 yeah. just them Montages. shooting people yeah. yeah and uh i can't really remember any other super memorable attacks they do do you remember any that jump out of you they're just kind of yeah i'm trying to remember them i don't i don't know like the sequence of events that they all kind of oh no together, oh no <laughs> <laughs> like a, i mean i remember at some point it starts snowing so i remember those stuff but I think there's, yeah, there's some stuff on the road, them just shooting down at soldiers. I think they actually go back to the camp and, and liberate a bunch of people in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. What else? And then, yeah, I guess the, the snow stuff, but I don't remember. Yeah, they're just handing them guns, too, when they're liberating them. Yeah. There, if you're going <laughs> to die, die for something. And then I thought it was weird, like, they liberated this camp. I, oh, I love it when the, the pilot runs to the one jet they have oh, at the yeah. camp. The one jet they could afford to get on set, obviously just a shell of a jet. And then, like, they keep cutting back to it and, like, playing the same clip from different angles. Of the explosion. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, first they show that, like, oh, shit, he's going to take off. But, like, they threw a grenade in the jet. That kind of didn't do anything because later he throws a grenade on top of it. But, uh... The jet starts to take off, and it just the the nose rises mm -hmm. like off the ground, like they're just lifting it, and it's like Ooh, there's some noise. It's like that's not how that thing takes off. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. And then they throw the grenade, and it blows up. And then like later, as they're establishing the whole camp, kind of being blown up, they show that shot again, but wider. <laughs> and it's like that already happened. Uh, that was good. And uh, yeah, but what I thought they would liberate everybody. And then they have another scene later where it's like the people that are left at the camp get shot down. 
because of it. It's mm-hmm. like, why did they stay? Why did they not leave? It's like, I don't get it. Like, no, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> we'll stay here. They're feeding us at least. Yeah. <laughs> They're nice guys. Or like, what happened to the people that liberated? You would think that they had all go out into the mountains together and start like an army, but did they just no, they just went their own ways. They just went their own ways. Their group never gets bigger, only smaller. <laughs> never bigger. <laughs> oh, uh, it's like the it's like the game Fire Emblem. It's a strategy RPG where you can actually lose people permanently. That's what it's like. <laughs> You're just losing people. <laughs> Eventually, there's like two of you <laughs> trying to beat the game, and it ain't working. Uh, Which technically, that's how the movie ends. Is that I think there's only two people left. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, eventually, this U.S. pilot colonel, fucking, she sees the Leah Thompson character sees uh some debris of a plane and goes and investigates, and there's this guy sleeping underneath a bush are you american and he does a really shittily acted grab for his gun like he could totally make it (laughs) but she she stomps on his hand ah yeah i'm american what's the capital of texas houston it's austin you son of a bitch (laughs) and the way was he say ah i'm tired (laughs) i forgot i'm tired (laughs) i knew that give me another one (laughs) Uh, yeah, tell me Washington. Yeah, yeah. I'll and then I, I read a, a weird story on here that Leah Thompson said that there was originally a love scene between her and Colonel. And then in one of the early screenings, they cut it out because the age difference. I was like, yeah, you think? These high school kids, Colonel comes in talking about, yeah, I miss my wife. Don't know if she's alive. And then she ends. Yeah, and then he ends up fucking one of these people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. But even though they cut it out, they didn't cut out like kind of the love story because there are, there are parts. Yeah, yeah. Where she's like flirting with him, like, uh, "What's your wife like?" And is it, do you really want to know this? And like, it doesn't make much sense. But once you know that, he's like, "Why? Why would you want to know when we're doing stuff?" <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to know how. What is she like? <laughs> is she prettier than me? Huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, because then, like, at the end, or I can't remember, he's, they're doing, like, a big battle at the end, right? And, oh, I think a guy in a tank just kind of gently tosses a, a grenade out of the top of the oh, tank yeah. hole that he's on, and he's like, ah! <laughs> blows up under him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> just a grenade in your chest. And, ah! Ooh! <laughs> Ouch! <That> stung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no! And then after that, she's like, I'll never love again! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? I was like, what? No, you yeah. love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You loved him? Okay. Again? Never? <laughs> hmm. Strange. It's really that deep for you, huh? Yeah, good luck with that. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, and then I love that one line he has. Uh, for some reason, sporadically, the U.S. Army kind of helps, but almost never. Like, during that scene, they got some planes, and he's like, yeah. And then he, like, throws a red smoke grenade when he's dying on the tank, and he's like, try to aim straight, you army pukes. <laughs> Obviously, he's like, I don't know, Air Force or something. Yeah. Or Marines. I don't know. And I thought it was strange that he's a colonel. I was like, eh, I don't, I've never heard of a colonel flying planes. Yeah. You know, I'm a colonel. If you're flying the plane yourself, <laughs> the fuck? Desperate yeah, measures, I, I guess. <laughs> I just couldn't let it go. They promoted me a couple of times. But I was like, I'm staying in that plane. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, because then they have a another scene where they're talking to someone in the town. And it's like, and he's like, Patrick Swayze. He's like, oh, it's so hard. I don't want to do this anymore. And it's like, no, you're doing good. You're actually hurting them. They know of you. They might even know about you over all the way in California. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> and uh, he's he's like, I I even heard that special forces were gonna come and help you in the spring. And oh, in the spring, or they're just waiting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they heard they they heard about this group of ragtag kids up in wherever Colorado, and we're gonna help them a little bit. 
and he's like, oh, spring is so far away, and that's where they kind of do the seasons march to spring. Yeah. And I guess at the end, that must be the special forces they were talking about coming in with those planes. But uh, by the end of it, um, I, I, I love that line, too, that that one guy gives one of the bad guy leaders. He's like, because they're starting to lose control, and he's like, well, we made a big mistake. If a fox comes in and kills your chickens, right, he said, you, you don't, don't kill, kill your chickens the, you, for seeing or or you don't Eating kill the pig. Or, yeah, yeah, that's for right. seeing the fox. Yeah. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying we shouldn't have killed the people that had nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That could work. Win the hearts and minds. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, by the end battle, uh, Charlie Sheen gets killed. Um... Oh yeah, one of their friends. I like that scene too. Uh, betrays him, oh, right? Yeah. This is a stupid ass team going out to. It's one of those classic. I don't even know if these exist. It doesn't seem like they do. They always have these tracking devices in movies like this. It's just a giant box that arbitrarily beeps mm -hmm. more when you're closer to the thing, but there's no direction on it or anything. It's just like just fucking randomly walking to. Yep. It's like it's got to be the worst way to find something. It's so that's hard. How, uh, I don't know if you've seen Cliffhanger in a while, but that's literally like they have this device in Cliffhanger looking for the money the whole movie. It's, it's so fucking hilarious. Mm. No, I haven't seen it in a grip. Boop, 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 boop. Um, yeah, then they're like, how did they find us, man? Look at this device. Oh, and they bring it over to their friend. Where's the device? They made me swallow it. I went into town. I was hungry. <laughs> you went into town, you son of a bitch. <laughs> My dad turned me in. What the fuck? <laughs> Damn, bro. So you came back <laughs> to fuck with us? <laughs> Wasn't enough that you got fucked? You got to fuck us with you. <laughs> you and your fucking dad. Oh, shit. oh yeah, and I, and they and I'm and they also told the story of how that that store owner got killed. They made an example of him for helping the rebels. Oh yeah, <laughs> like we were just we were just a couple kids getting free soda at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were not <laughs> That's all that was. Yeah, <laughs> we were not rebels, and he was not aiding. He gave us some soda <laughs> <laughs> and some guns, unregistered right. weapons. Okay. Uh. Yeah, so then the friend, and they also caught that Russian. All the Russians are, like, played by white guys. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, you American dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and so they got the friend and this Russian tied up. They're going to execute him. And I like how Charlie Sheen is like, No, not going to do it. What the fuck do you mean you're not going to do it? What's the difference between us and them? Oh, yeah. He's like, we live here. He's like, yeah, that's a big difference, man. <laughs> they invaded our country and we're defending it. That's the fucking difference. And <laughs> they're killing innocent civilians. We're killing their militia that invaded our fucking country. So like, in this situation, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm popping this guy in the head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm not even, I'm not even torn about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially with his mouth. <laughs> you know, he wasn't even... Shut the fuck up. Some of them were kind of like, oh, please don't kill me, and they shoot him. That makes sense. But the guy was like, hey, fuck you, American doll. Hell no. <laughs> I'm going to tear this guy apart with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch, dude. And we see, uh, we see in Save a Prior Ryan when you let that person go because eventually yeah. they come back in the end with their fucking yeah, never kill people. It never works out. Yeah. They're never just like, oh, okay, I... Thank you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and for go about with their lives. And later on, they have a cut scene where they're like 80. I still remember that man who spared my life. <laughs> I wonder what he's doing to this day. <laughs> I hope he's well. So, uh, where was I going with that? The, uh, oh, yeah, the friend they have to execute. So it's easy to kill the Russian guy, but then yeah. they're more torn on the friend. And Swayze's got the gun to his gun up to him ah! 
<laughs> yelling, inner inner struggle becoming outer yells. <laughs> and then the other friend is kind of, the whole scene is kind of creeping up to him. <laughs> he even says, I'll do it, because they're like, I don't know if I can do it. I'll yeah, do it. Talking, I'll do it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, he is, uh, you know, a fucking a, a betrayer, a detractor, a fucking all the above, man. Mm-hmm. That seems appropriate to shoot him. What else are you going to do? Don't exactly have a tribunal here with our, you know, Lord of the Flies group on the top of the hill. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, yeah, Swayze's torn, and he just walks up and <laughs> <laughs> he just barely raises it. So it's like to his stomach. <laughs> like, ah, <"Yeah>. shit. <laughs> Super slow to have a couple yeah. shots in the stomach. And everyone kind of looks at him, and he's just kind of. Told you I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> it's done, guys. <laughs> done. Let's go get some more soda. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, last battle, they're fighting. Um, and I like that. Uh, there's this weird, awkward moment at the end where Patrick Swayze kills like the main. One of the main bad guys, like generals, he comes around the corner, and the guy's got the gun. What does Patrick Swayze say? You're done, or something. Gotcha now. Mm-hmm. Like, when he has a gun, <laughs> and it's like, dude, just shoot him. Just shoot and him, So yeah. he, he's able to shoot him, because he fucking has to say something, and ah! <laughs> so they both get shot. Bad guy worse than Swayze dies. Swayze's hurt. Picks up the body of his brother and just walks out of the battlefield and while he's leaving the other like second in command guy sees him raises a gun up to him Swayze just turns with the body Mm -hmm. like as if to say do what you will (laughs) I'm taking my brother out of here (laughs) and then he's lowers his gun god damn it I respect you (laughs) (laughs) and then he looks at his hands and then what what does he say he says, uh, oh, fuck. He says, like, uh, uh Las Vidas Muertas. <laughs> so he says some <laughs> Spanish saying and lets him go, uh, Hasta la Vista. It's something like that. <laughs> it's like I've heard it before. I can't remember it, though. And then he looks at his hands and, then, like, brushes his almost to say, What have I done? <laughs> it's like, Oh, my God. Yeah. And then that's it. And then I, the, I guess the only person that survived out of their ragtag group was uh, the Dirty Dancing chick. And one of the eventually. kids, I don't remember what the kid's name. It was him and, and her. Was it Aardvark? Uh, Could have been. I don't remember the kid's name. He was like barely in it. He was always one of the side guys in the group. Yeah. Uh, but him and uh, Leah Thompson make it. It could be Aardvark. Yeah. I don't remember. Does Leah Thompson make it? Or, because the yeah. voiceover at the end is the other chick. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Leah Thompson is the one. Yeah, because uh, the other, the I keep wanting to say Flashdance, not uh, the Dirty Dancing chick. Uh, she gets killed. Fuck, when does she get? She gets killed in one of the snow sequences. Oh yeah, she does. Down. Yeah, <laughs> and then she asks for a grenade mm-hmm. instead of getting shot to ease the pain. And I was just like, that's mm, we're gonna waste a grenade on your suicide. Yeah. One bullet is all it takes. Okay, here's your grenade. Pull the pin for me. Here you go. And then the the guys come and find her, the bad guys, and like somehow the grenade fell underneath her, and she never used it, and it's still active. Like because they pick her body up, and then the grenade's like under her, and like oh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> yeah. So then there's the end with the Pride Rock or whatever it is. They got the yeah. fucking rock, and there's a sign there now. Back, back in the beginning. Of the invasion of World War Three, a group of young children, or this place was protected mostly by children, who scratched the names of the fallen on this rock to be remembered always. And uh, this this plaque is in remembrance of their sacrifice to, to save the, the, the nation of America. So long live the Wolverines or something yeah. like that. 
And then it just cuts out. Yeah, like black and white photos with their name. Something, something as Aardvark. I don't even get a real name. No. You are Aardvark. Call sign Aardvark. Yeah, it's pretty fun in the beginning. And then it gets to that middle part that kind of drags on pretty good. Totally, and then the and then the end is okay. Um, it's just kind of amusing the whole way through. I guess that's why it's become this cult thing because you can watch it; it's amusing. Uh, makes me want to try the the remake again. I remember that being okay. Obviously, not good by any means. Mm-hmm. Some weird weird casting in that one. Josh Peck and fucking Chris <laughs> Thor. Hemsworth, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, but this one. Hmm. Realistically, I gotta go like a six point three. I think. Okay. If I'm just trying to, I don't have much nostalgia for this. It did play all the time in our group of friends, but I was yeah. never a big fan of it. I didn't really get it. Mm-hmm. Like it had some cheesy one-liners, but it's like three of them. It's just people just quote it all the time, and I was just like, well, <laughs> I don't really get it. I don't, you know, yeah. I, I, I can, I can get a lot of these cult movies, and they're awesome, but this one, it's not awesome. So I don't have a nostalgic number. It's really like a six point three. Yeah, this is my first time sitting down to watch it because, like you said, it's it was always on in our group of friends, so it was just either in the background or I just wasn't paying attention to it. And obviously, our friends would quote it all the time. I'm like, God damn it. And I just have like a blind spot for a lot of '80s cult films. So, uh, luck, you know, luckily I've been checking some of these off, like Caddyshack, and I think there's a couple other ones that are cults that I, we got to review on the show. So I figured let's do Red Dawn because that's another one that I haven't seen. And you know what it reminded me of? This doesn't really happen today because of streaming, but back back when we all had TV, there was always like. Sunday afternoons, you sitting on your lazy boy, your couch, and you just be scrolling through. And like TNT, there would be like Hunt for the Red October, or like on TBS, fucking The Born Identity, like these like kind of silly action movies that you're just like, oh yeah, that's on. I'm gonna just maybe take a nap, get my little blanket on a Sunday afternoon, and watch this movie. That's yeah. Red Dawn feels like that kind of like Sunday afternoon on TNT kind of movie, if that makes sense. Um, there's not a whole lot of meat to it. Um, I think and it's story, pretty long. It is pretty long, yeah. I was it's like, man, this movie's two, two hours? hours? But it's like, it feels like three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but I think the strength of the movie is its uh, concept, I guess. This idea that... Uh, yeah, the concept is pretty cool. The pretty concept fun. is what kind of carries the movie. Because for most of the movie, it's really action-heavy for the most part. It's just action and then a couple minutes of dialogue. More action, a couple minutes of dialogue. It's just that repeated for two hours. Um yeah, I love the first like 30 to 40 minutes, like the invasion, how quickly it fucking starts. And I love that we are getting a slice of World War III f- through the lens of like a small, I think it's Colorado. I think I saw that IMDb, wherever it is, small town. Because I when think it is pow- too. Powers Booth comes in, we start getting more exposition about what's happening else in the big cities mm-hmm. of America. So it was kind of cool to see like what would happen from a small town perspective. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wish. Um, it would have been cool if they had a bigger budget or something to do, like, maybe we just hang out in the woods for a while to get to know a lot of these characters, and then maybe at the end there's, like, a big battle. Like, maybe it's the first big victory in America in yeah. this war. Like, maybe the, the military comes in the last second, helps them out. Um, and I did I did hear that this is, like, triple the budget that they originally started with. Oh, really? Damn. Like, because their concept kept getting bigger, and this is what they... This is what the budget looks like tripled. Jesus. I don't know what the movie would have been originally. It's just you yeah. sitting in dirt. <laughs> you know, God. that's it. Yeah, I guess now I think about it, they had a lot of, uh, I don't know what it cost to like rent tanks from the from the military or something because they had a lot of... Uh, they made equipment. they made replicas. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah, I think that's probably where their cost came from because there's a story I read. They were shipping the tanks into the town they're filming and they got stopped by like a CIA or FBI agent who wanted to know where these came from because Damn, they were trippy. very, very accurate replicas. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's fine. Oh yeah. I was going to say, you were mentioning the, the uh, jet plane during the, um, when they were liberating those people. I, it reminded me of like, there's some, um, 
there's some kinks in the in the there's some cracks in the movie like every time a rocket would i don't know if you saw this but they'd be on a wire you can see the rocket on a wire kind of like shaky like that's fucking awesome i love seeing little quirks like that um but yeah i don't know i was coming with a 6.6 i don't think it's a seven um i think it's completely fine uh like i said this feels like a sunday afternoon action movie you would find on yeah. tv um uh so yeah for what it's worth yeah 6.6 it was uh glad i watched it it's, it's fun 6.6, 6.3. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And if you have seen it, you probably watch it every once in a while because that's just how it goes with Red Dawn. Uh, if you're curious, check out the remake too. Uh, I don't know where the remake is. I don't think I saw that on Max, but this one is on yeah, Max it on currently. Max, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. 6.3, 6.6. We appreciate having you. Thanks for coming by. Hope you enjoy your Sunday. Please join us every Sunday while we chat about these these little films okay uh as always we're on uh spotify and apple music and you can always check us out here on youtube on brian versus brian we appreciate your time we love having you and until the next piece we always tell you peace peace